Good morning. So I know there are a lot of you out there who dream about writing a book someday. It has been on your wish list or your to-do list for a while, maybe too long. Maybe it's something that you feel like you need to actually make sure you follow through and do because books are really, really hot right now. And especially for those of us who are building blogs, building blogs as businesses, building businesses as entrepreneurs, we need a way to really show that we are authorities on what we're talking about. And a book is one of the best ways to do that. And it's much faster than sitting there and writing guest post after guest post and pitching to podcast after podcast, hoping that somebody notices you, that book will automatically put you above everybody else who is doing the same thing, but who doesn't have a book. It still just has this tremendous amount of clout. And I think that you should go ahead and jump in and do that. And so today I want to just kind of talk through the process of getting started with that and tell you about a free challenge I have to help you get started. Before I do that, I want to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Dr. Beth Brombos of Blogger to Author. I'm a number one best-selling author and I am very, very passionate about helping bloggers and content and other content creators, which somehow got <laughs> condensed into content, uh, helping them get their books out into the world for the reasons that I've just explained to you. Having that book is super, super powerful and it's going to do a lot for you. So I just want you to jump in feet first and get your book out into the world. And I know I've interviewed many authors before and on my podcast, if you listen, and I've gotten some great interviews with blogger authors. And a lot of them, they had this book idea and it was like almost it, like burning a hole through their brain and they just needed to get it out and they wrote it in 30 days. I know I wrote my first book in 30 days. I wrote my most recent book. I put it together in just three days, really like five hours worth of work. So you can do it really quickly. Uh, but there are some of us who don't necessarily know exactly what we want to put in our books and we need to do a little bit more planning before we get started. And so that's really what I want to help you out with right now. So starting next Monday, I do have a free challenge beginning. So that's Monday, April 16th. If you go to blogger2author.com slash challenge, you can sign up for it. Um, as part of the challenge, I'm actually giving you free access to my book blueprint mini course. And it's a mini course that normally I charge $27 for, but you get it for free uh, when you go ahead and just go to blogger authorcom slash challenge and I will uh, start dripping that out to you via email starting next Monday and I'll be there in a uh, community or Facebook group to answer questions that sort of thing so I'm just really excited to help a lot of people hopefully plan their books because I do think that it's a lot easier with that plan um, and really what I've had happen with I've run similar but not exact same challenges before and just that process of coming up with the plan for the book figuring out what you need to do it just provides so much momentum to the process and really I think it's because you know you're seeing that you're making progress you see how feasible it is to finish your book you see how feasible it is to you know, check that off your list and the closer you are and the easier and realer it seems, then, you know, it makes it also easier to prioritize it, to put in time because you're not feeling like you're spending time on something that's never going to come to fruition. You're spending time on something that's very real and that you could hold in your hands literally like in a couple weeks or maybe sooner and maybe in a month, that sort of thing, um, just with some solid work. But... I am a firm believer that planning is the smartest thing to do with a book. And this is especially if you don't have a lot of content that you can repurpose um, or if you've got so much content that you don't even know where to start. So what that plan is going to do is it's going to make your time that you do spend working more focused. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to get 
work done in a short period of time because you can be more focused because you know exactly what you need to do. And um, for those of you, I don't know if you're like me, I ideally try to plan my days out um, either the Sunday before or the night before. So then the next morning, I've actually, here, I'll show you what I've got here. <laughs> diatribe, but a good example. So I've got this little notepad. Um, it's got, you know, the five weekdays and the weekend. And so what I'll do is fill out one of these every single week or something similar. Sometimes it's just on a piece of scratch paper. Uh, but what that does is it allows me to say, okay, Monday, my number one focus needs to be this. So when I wake up, I don't get distracted by social media and I don't get distracted by all of this other stuff because I'm like, okay, I know that if I'm going to get the stuff done, that's going to get me closer to my goal. I know that I need to get A, B, and C done, and this is what needs to be my focus. And it just helps me, again, get those things done and in a shorter period of time because I'm not being distracted by all of the other stuff. And um, so that's the analogy that it's also having that plan for your book is going to help. Um, and again, I talk about this a lot, but just because it's so true, I know I've experienced it if you're, you know, it, whether you consider yourself a blogger or a writer, I'm sure that you've experienced this as well, where you sit down to write something. And this used to happen to me all the time when I was really trying to write a lot of blog posts. Like I went through a period where I was trying to write like four or five a week, like something crazy or like my goal was to write one every day. And it was just insane the amount of content I was churning out. But sometimes I get to a point where I knew I wanted to write a blog post, but I had no idea what I wanted to write the blog post about. Um, and so then having an editorial calendar came in handy because I knew, okay, I want to talk about this topic on this day. But even then, just knowing the topic, sometimes it's hard to sit down and be like, okay, I'm supposed to talk about this, but what am I supposed to say like on this topic? Um, you know, okay, I'm going to talk about dog training, but like where do I even start? Dog training is really huge. But if I want to narrow that down and say, okay, I'm going to teach my dog to heal and these are the steps that I need to talk about, um, you know, uh, where your dog needs to be developmentally, how to correct some issues, that sort of thing. That when I know that, um, that smaller, more refined topic and I know those subtopics that I need to talk about, it makes the writing process a lot easier and I can just churn it out real fast. Likewise, your book plan, your outline is going to do the same thing. When you have that detailed outline, it just makes the process go a lot faster. And so especially, I'm sure that every single person watching this is really busy and you don't have a ton of time to spend writing. And so you need to make sure that you are working very efficiently when you do have time to write. And so that's where that detailed blueprint or that detailed plan comes in. And that's what I'm going to help you do in that challenge. Um, so again, you can sign up blogger to author.com slash challenge. It's totally free. Uh, so do that. I'd love to have you in there. Again, we're going to help you plan, get you to the outline stage, help you create a plan for getting the book finished. Um, so then after that, your steps are going to be to write the book, to edit the book, and then to publish the book. And I will say that this is going to be, uh, this is aimed, or that sequence, I guess, is aimed at people who are self-publishing. Um, this challenge is still good for, um, I will say, uh, non-fiction authors. Fiction authors, you're uh, slightly different. Your process is going to be a little different. Um, but for people who want to work with a traditional publisher, you the challenge will still be super helpful for you. You need to figure out what you need to put in your book, that sort of thing, because that outline will be part of your book proposal. But then the next step is to create a book proposal and find a book agent. So don't spend a lot of time writing a book because honestly, it could be a waste of time if you don't intend to self-publish. Um, especially with nonfiction, the next step is to work on that book proposal and get that, um, you know, again, to a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? An agent. And then uh, get that to a publisher and then you'll work with your editor at that publisher to get everything packaged up. Um, but for self-published authors, it's a lot faster, much easier. There's not that extra step of creating a proposal. All you do is get your stuff written, borrow as much as you can from other um, 
from other sources. Definitely your blog posts, uh, video transcripts, audio transcripts. If you're a fellow podcaster, get all that packaged together. Um, get your manuscript prepared, edit it. Consider hiring an editor if you can afford one. If not, at least have a friend read through it. Get another set of eyes on your manuscript somehow. And then... Um, if you're self-publishing, I highly recommend using Create Space. It's what I've used for my books, and it's what I will continue to do. Actually, I did one with KDP Print. It was a pain in the butt. There were all sorts of little glitches. I am going to stick for now through Create Space. Um, but Create Space has these templates that you can download, and so you can just copy and paste your your manuscript into the template and then you save it as a PDF, you upload it to Create Space, you upload your cover and you are good to go. You've published a book. So um, I think that, again, a lot of people too, they think it's this huge task and they never even get started because they get so overwhelmed by the idea of writing a book and they don't understand just how tangible it is to get there. And so again, I think Getting that plan is going to be a really helpful first step to help you build that momentum, to help you see how close you are. Um, and go to blogger to authorcom slash challenge again to sign up for this challenge starting Monday. I'm going to help walk you through that. And then the next steps in the process, again, for self-published authors are to get your book put together, whether that's writing new material or borrowing from old material. Um, make sure that your manuscript is polished. So do some editing get it formatted. And then, like I said, it's, uh, you can get a template from create space, copy and paste, export it as a PDF, and then upload it to create space and you are an author. So, um, I think just knowing the steps and seeing how close you may be, um, is incredibly motivating. It helps build that momentum. The more you do, the closer you'll get. And then the more you'll be pushed to get there. Um, and again, just to bring it around full circle. Just remember why you're writing your book, that it's going to help you build authority, no matter how many copies you sell. It's going to help set you apart as a thought leader and really help you establish yourself as a thought leader, no matter how many copies you sell. Um, and even if you sell just a few copies of your book, it's still going to help people. You you are helping people. And so keep that in mind. Your book does not have to be a bestseller to help people improve their lives. Your book will absolutely do that even if you only sell 10 copies of it. It's still going to be tremendously helpful and it still can absolutely help you build your business even if you don't sell a ton of copies because the people who read that book, they're going to get to know you very well and they're going to start to trust you much more than they would if they're just following you on social media because it takes some time to read a book and it's more intimate than just seeing somebody on social media um and then the people who buy your book are also going to be much warmer leads than somebody who just signs up for a lead magnet or somebody who um just follows you on social media and so those people are going to also be better um fits for any products or services that you have at a higher price point too. So just keep in mind the big picture as well and understand how your book fits into that big picture. And I think that that will help you stay motivated as well. Um, so yes, good luck to you as you go through the process. Please join me for this free challenge. I would love to have you in there and I would love to help you plan your book. Again, go to blogger2author.com slash challenge to sign up and you will get the mini course for free. Have a great Thursday and take care of yourself and happy writing. I'll see you later.